Hey, what's up, y'all? My name is Wande. I'm a hip hop artist. I also love Jesus. Hello, I'm Erin Knight. I'm Jackie O'Berry. What's up? I'm Jamie Grace. I'm super excited for all the guests that we have here today. I'm pretty sure you're going to love them. Um, so I was going to ask y'all, to you personally, what does it look like to trust God through the struggle moments of your life? And so. I would be, I want um, all y'all to share, like you could talk about what does it look like to trust God with your finances as seeing as most of us don't have normal nine to five jobs or, you know, how some of y'all have kids, you know, with your relationships, what does it look like to trust God in that area or even your brand in general? So I think it'd be cool just to like share your experiences of how you've learned to, through that fear, trust the Lord. To me, I feel like any, any struggle or trial kind of gives me two options it's like okay do you do you believe that god is what he has revealed himself to be in the scriptures or do you believe what your circumstances are telling you about god and so i think if i were to use this season now this season is awkward <laughs> and weird i don't i don't think anybody foresaw uh a time coming where events would not be happening that just how do you even plan for that apart from an emergency fund? You know what I'm saying? And so to me, this is, this is weird and this is awkward in the sense that I feel like I'm trusting God in a way that I never had to trust him. Um, that's not to say that I haven't struggled financially or whatever, but it's just like, okay, God, I put all my apples in this basket. You know, I, I left this to say, I'm going to serve the church in this particular way with speaking, with writing, with poetry, whatever. But every way I serve the church, all of that's been ripped out from under me. So now what? But I feel like God is like, okay, what you choose to believe about me in this moment is that I'm sovereign, that I'm faithful, that I'm good, that I'm wise, and that all of your provision has always come by my hand, not these events and not these books and not this stuff. You know what I'm saying? The stuff was a means by which I provided, but it was always me in the first place. And so I felt like God was like, you thought you was trusting me, but you was trusting your calendar. You, you saw the dates and you was like, oh, I'm straight, but, but you called it faith. And it wasn't faith. It was you were secure because you knew what was coming. And so I guess it's just like, man, what has God said about himself? Either I'm going to believe it or I'm going to worry myself to death. And that ain't fun. So. Big facts. I think I can definitely agree with that because I know when Corona started, I was like, oh, you know, one cancellation. Two cancellations. I was like, I was like, hold on, what's going on? And yeah, I totally agree with like, it, it challenges what you're actually putting your faith in for sure. Because Whenever Corona first started, I was like, yo, because now it, it got real. It got real scary because I was like, okay, I got real bills and no real income coming in. <laughs> so, um, but definitely it's been super dope to like, you know, choose to not give into fear, not give into anxiety and be like, all right, because kind of like how you were saying earlier, like God was the one providing those anyway. All those other things were just a mean. So it's just like, all right, God, I'm choosing to lean into you and to walk this out. Like, and just keep going on this journey. So not, not, to, not to say too much, but just to add, I think, you know, in Philippians 4, Paul talks about how he's learned to be a base and a bound because he can do all things through Christ who strengthens him. And how I feel like for the most part, American Christians in particular, we have been abounding. We really have. Like <laughs> we've been winning out here, uh, key the, the title of this thing. And so I think it's good for us as a church and as Christians and as creatives to be put in a position where we have to trust God differently. Um, but with that, I also think, I don't know, I might be tripping that God is also setting us up to win again, because truth be told next year, when all this stuff open back up, events are going to be popping. People are going to be, <laughs> they're going to have FOMO. Like, about, Oh, I got to pay $75. I miss people. I miss humans. I miss merch. I miss sitting there and watching people sing songs that I, I haven't heard in front of my face in a long time. You know what I'm saying? So I, th I think we're going to be okay. It just doesn't feel that way right now. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Full circle plan. For real. Hey, do you have anything you want to say? Right. Um, yeah. All of, all of that is so good for sure because, you know, just like, I mean, like you guys, so much of my life is, is like live, uh, the live event world. And um, I'm just learning to, you know, learning to trust, trust in the Lord and trust that he's, you know, working on something. It's like, it's, it's, it can be easy to be like, 
oh yeah, like God's so good. Like God's working on some family. Like, he's got me like, you know, hashtag beautiful day. Everything's great. But um, at the same time, it's like, uh, like actually putting that into action. You know, I, I, um, I, I have a, um, a degree in anxiety. Um, and so I'm really good at, at worrying and I'm really good at f- fear of being afraid and I'm really good at being stressed out. Um, and I think the more that I have, you know, of course I'm, I'm being a goofball in a way, but the, the more that I have learned to just like accept that that's something that I am good at, um, it's the easier it has been for me to trust God, if that makes sense, because sometimes I can just kind of, I don't know. I, so I, fortunately I never experienced this in my home church, but, um, just in a lot of Christian culture, you know, I've just been told that like, you know, like don't talk about like fear and stuff like that. Like that's a, of the devil. And don't talk about like anxiety, like God doesn't want you to have anxiety and like all, and, and like, yeah, like I, I do believe that for sure. Um, but for me, it's been acknowledging that that fear is there and acknowledging that that doubt is there and acknowledging that that anxiousness is there that allows me to say, okay, this is what I'm feeling, but what can I trust that's greater than my feelings? Like, this is what's present, but what can I trust that's omnipresent? And like, oh, sorry, that was like such like a Southern Baptist preacher's kid thing of me to say, but like, you know, like what, what can I trust that's much greater than, than what I'm, what I'm going through? And, um, I, yeah, I mean, when I, when I was 11, uh, I was diagnosed with Tourette syndrome, uh, OCD, ADHD, and anxiety, uh, which is why I'm quite fidgety and, and, uh, and don't speak with a ton of eye contact, <laughs> but, um, it's, it's a tick disorder. So I, 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 I can't control, um, you know, vocal ticks and, and, and physical ticks, especially when I'm talking about it. Um, but it, it, it's difficult for sure, but it has been one of the greatest learning tools in my life because especially when it comes to my faith, um, and I don't say this to like pity party or anything, but I physically, because of the way my brain is wired, I physically don't have control over my body. Um, and so it, it is, it's taught, it's, it's taught me that I have to trust, like it's, it's my only option. I have to trust my heart. I have to, I have to go to my foundation because every, the stuff built on top of my foundation, my physical body function, it's, it's not trustworthy. Um, you know, and it's just this daily, it's a daily reminder that this place is not my home. And it's a daily reminder that this is just a body and it won't be forever. It's a daily reminder that there is someone and there is something so much greater than my body and my circumstances and my day to day. Um, and, and that is, that's Jesus and that's my faith and that's, um, it's my foundation. So it's just a reminder to me that, you know, we all have things in our lives that we can't control and globally we're currently feeling it with COVID. Um, and I, I, in a like kind of like privileged way, I feel like, Oh, I've been preparing for this. Like (laughs) I'm really good at stuff I can't control. It, it, It teaches me to trust. Um, and, um, and that's what I can control. And so I choose to, and not saying it's easy, but, it just, it, it's, it's great to have something constant and that doesn't change and that is consistently faithful. Um, and that's God. And so I, I just, I just, it's a daily choice. Thanks. That was beautiful. Thank you for sharing, James. Yeah, man. Thank you for listening. No, no problem. I think that's super <laughs> great. Even for you, like seeing how you've been able to work through that, because I think I think a lot of us who just view you just through the lens of like artists and stuff like that, like you would never know the struggles that you go through every day just to just operate and function in your normal (laughs) everyday life. So I think it's beautiful seeing how like through everything you've been through, like God has still been able to use you and God has still been able to do great things and impact a whole bunch of lives out here. So I think that's super great. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. I, I enjoy writing songs that are upbeat and joyful and, make everybody feel like they've just gotten cotton candy delivered to their front door. But I also enjoy getting to remind them that the first half of Psalm 30 verse five, which is weeping may endure for a night, 
is what brought that joy. And so um, I, I appreciate you. I was going to say acknowledging that and then it felt too formal and now I don't know how to end this sentence. So. <laughs>